If you're on the journey of saving for your first home, stick around because today I'm going to explain a method that you can use to put money towards your first home deposit. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese. In today's video, we are talking about the first home super saver scheme. The first home super saver scheme was introduced by the Australian government in 2018 to help relieve pressure on the affordability of people being able to buy a home. The scheme allows you to save money for your first home in your superannuation fund. And it's intended to help first home buyers save money faster by offering them a tax incentive of treating it the same as if you were putting money into super, which means the money you contribute towards this scheme will be taxed at 15% instead of at the other tax thresholds that your normal income would fall into. Since July of 2017, you as an individual has been able to make contributions to your superannuation fund voluntarily. So this is both non-concessional and concessional contributions. Just as an explainer, a concessional contribution is a before tax contribution and a non-concessional contribution is an after-tax contribution. So let's say you had a salary sacrificing agreement with your employer, that would be a concessional voluntary contribution where your money is being taken pre-tax or a non-concessional contribution which would be you getting paid for the week, you've already paid tax on it, your employer's withheld that tax and then you make the contribution. So with this in mind, since July of 2018, exactly one year later, you have been able to now withdraw up to $15,000 per year worth saved, capped at $30,000 to put towards your first home deposit. Now it can be also be stacked with what you've saved up with your own personal income. And ultimately it's a really great way to just save up money really quickly for a purpose that you are already intending to use. Just keep in mind, there are some eligibility criteria that you must meet in order to be able to access this scheme. So you can only use this if you are going to be a first home buyer and meet the following criteria. So firstly, you are going to live on the premises within 12 months of purchasing the property or building it, or you're going to move in as reasonably as practical. And secondly is you must live in it for at least six months once you have purchased and moved in. So you must intend to live in it and you have to live in it for at least six months before you move out of it. So this scheme allows you to put anywhere up to $15,000 per financial year into your superannuation fund for this purpose and it's capped at 30 grand. So if you did 15,000 one year, 15,000 the second year, boom, you're at your 30 grand, you're at your cap, you're ready to go. Or if you did $5,000 a year for six years, same thing again, you would get to 30 grand eventually, and then you would be able to withdraw that full amount to put towards your deposit. Now there are a number of important things that you need to understand if you are intending to use this method. So you must apply through the Australian Taxation Office to be eligible to actually go on the first home super saver scheme. And this will take precedence, meaning you need to do it before signing a contract for a property or applying to have funds withdrawn from your superannuation account. Superannuation contributions made by your employer, which is the mandatory 9.5%, or a spouse depositing money into your super fund cannot be used for this scheme. They are exempt. They are not allowed to be used. It must be money that you yourself has contributed voluntarily. Keep that in mind. So you can only request the release of funds under this scheme once. If your application is unsuccessful because you haven't provided the information that is correct or you haven't proven that you're actually going to use this money for the intended purpose, you can't apply for it again. It's a one-time thing. And you should request the funds or a release of the funds at around the time that you start the buying process. So as an example, right around the time where you apply for a home loan. The home that you construct must be located within Australia itself, can't be anywhere in the world. It has to be in Australia and it has to be a home. It can't be a motor vehicle, a motor home, a houseboat, and it can't be land that you're not intending to build on. Alongside all of this process, you also need to tell the ATO once you have successfully acquired a home because it's gonna factor into your tax return come the following year. And you have 12 months to notify the ATO that you have signed a contract and you've actually completed the task at hand successfully so that it can be factored into your tax return come tax time. So who's eligible? Who's eligible for this scheme? So anyone can make voluntary contributions to their superannuation account but you must be 18 years of age in order to be able to access this money for this purpose. You must have never owned a property within Australia 
And this includes investment properties, vacant land, or commercial property. And like I said earlier, it's a one-time thing. So you must have never applied for release of the funds for this scheme. Now, the cool thing about this is eligibility is assessed on a single person basis. Meaning, as an example, I have purchased a home. So I am no longer able to do this. I can't use the money from my super fund even if I voluntarily contribute to it. I'm exempt, I'm done, ah oh, well. However, if I was going to buy a property with my partner in the future, they would be able to contribute 30 grand of this money towards the deposit of the home. So each person who is eligible for it can combine their forces and put it towards it basically giving you the opportunity to have a $60,000 deposit, which has been saved up in two separate superannuation accounts over the course of, let's say three years it takes you to do it at 15% tax, you're gonna be saving a lot of money. So keep it in mind that it may be viable if you're planning to do it with a partner that you both put away the same amount of money into your super, which will ultimately bring your taxable income down it will contribute to your superannuation fund for now and also only be taxed at 15%, saving you money in many different ways and allowing you to have a pretty sizable deposit just from the superannuation account. And then you can save by yourself as well. Come the time that you're gonna be buying a house, it's gonna be viable for some people. Just to reiterate, so this is how you can actually start saving for this and that is by entering a salary sacrificing agreement with your employer. So this is separate to the 9.5% they pay you. This is you saying, take off $10,000 of my salary every year. And you take that out of my pay and chuck it into my super. Or if you get pretty close to tax time and you want to contribute 10 grand into your super for this scheme, you can also do it that way. Just understand that not every employer will offer this salary sacrificing method. And there may be some conditions with your actual super fund that you need to figure out before doing this. So make sure that there's no fees associated with releasing the funds from the superannuation account. Make sure you're actually eligible for this before doing it because you don't wanna lock that money away until your retirement. And just have an understanding of the actual process itself by reading up on it and doing your own research. I really encourage you to do that. The other thing I wanted to reiterate was it's a one-time thing, meaning if you try to withdraw funds from contributions that have been made by your employer, which are the mandatory contributions or a spouse's or a partner's contributions that they've put into your super fund, your application will be canceled. So make sure that the information you're providing is correct when going down this path. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out on the opportunity. Also be mindful that if you contribute more than $25,000 in a year to your superannuation fund, so this includes what your employer puts in and what you sacrifice into it, if it's more than $25,000 in a single year, every dollar over that $25,000 will be taxed as if it was your normal income, meaning there's no point in doing it this way. $25,000 is the cap. You don't wanna put more than that into your super fund. To withdraw the funds, you need to apply through the ATO using MyGov, which is an online portal, which most Australians should be familiar with. And also when you apply for this, the ATO will tell you how much you are actually eligible to withdraw from your super fund. So they'll give you the information because it should all be tracked through MyGov. This scheme is definitely gonna be beneficial and I'm sure it's being utilized by many Australians right now for people who are trying to get into their first home. Looking back, unfortunately, for me, it's something that I definitely should have done and I wish I knew about it because it would have assisted with that original deposit that I had to put towards buying my property. Ah, well, you can't win them all. I hope you learned something in today's video. I hope that it got your brain thinking about the first home super saver scheme. And if it's applicable to you, I wish you good luck on your journey towards buying your first home. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you in the next one.